Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eat Up Mondays. Just want to say thank you for joining me once again. I also want to say thank you for the comments, you know, all the love. I'm glad a lot of you have been being encouraged. Also want to thank you for those that have donated. Um, I really don't ask for donations, uh, but I do have the links, you know, in the uh, description of the YouTube videos. So, you know, people have donated. So I just want to say thank you uh, for that. It's truly a blessing. But, you know, if you follow us here on Eat Up Mondays, then many of you will know that last week I talked about identifying messages contrary to to doctrine, identifying messages contrary to doctrine. And in that particular message, I talked about the importance of, you know, uh, following behind those that are preaching and teaching, you know, out of the Bible to us. So um, the reason why I brought that up is because I kind of want to stay along those lines. It's really been heavy on my heart. And I kind of want to continue to talk about the importance of that and the importance of knowing who's talking to us. And, and if these people that are talking to us are talking to us from God or that they're telling us thus what saith the Lord. Amen. Um, so if you have not seen that message from last Monday, I will put it at the end of the video so that you can check it out. I'm also going to put another uh, video at the end of this video. And that message was called Stop Idolizing Your Servants. This is one from one of my In the Word episodes. It's called Stop Idolizing Your Servants. When I'm saying servants, I'm talking about your pastors, your preachers, and your apostles. And some of you may say, well, why do you call uh, them are servants. Well, listen, you need to check out the message. I'm pretty sure it will be an encouragement to you and be a blessing to you. And you'll kind of get where I'm coming from. But the reason why I mentioned both of those, because uh, they all, you know, to me tie into what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so yeah, check them out guys. So without further ado, I'm going to be coming out of first Kings chapter 13 verses nine through 24. But before I start at verse nine, I want to give you a little bit of the uh, background of this story. So listen, if you haven't got your fork and your knife already, please grab it, grab both of them and let's dig in. So this story is talking about Jeroboam and the man of God, King Jeroboam and the man of God. So before I dig into their little history and their little dealings, I want to give you a little bit of the background on King Jeroboam. You have to understand that Jeroboam had built two altars. He built one in Dan and he built one in Bethel. He also made two calves of gold for the people to worship. One he put in Dan and the other he put in Bethel. And this became a sin because God did not tell him to build these altars or to make these calves. Not only did he do that, but he also made priests of the lowest of people, which were not of the sons of Levi. So in other words, he made certain individuals priests that God did not ordain to be priests, you know, which is kind of funny to me because these are some of the things we still see happening today. And what's even crazier is he was doing all this basically not to lose the people that God had given him and placed him over. So now he's in this position and instead of continuing to follow the direction of the Lord, he is now leaning to his own understanding. The reason I say it's similar to what you know, we see today is because sometimes if you look at certain preachers, ministries, gospel musicians, etc., especially popular ones, when you look back to what they were preaching and singing about earlier in their ministry, you know, sometimes it's drastically different now, you know, um, and the messages and the songs are a lot more watered down or there's not as much biblical content in them as there used to be. And in some of these cases, I think it's because they don't want to offend and lose the people that they have attracted. It kind of reminds me of John chapter six, after Jesus fed the multitude, there was a large, a large crowd, you know, following him. But when it came down to him, keeping it real with them and giving them the word, the raw word, many walked away. So, you know, in this situation with Jeroboam, what God does is he sends a man of God out of Judah to cry out against the altar in Bethel. So as the man of God is crying out against the altar, you know, Jeroboam hears him and points at him and says, lay hold of him. Or, you know, in today's word, pretty much grab him, you know, but the hand that he pointed at the man of God, it dried up to the point where Jeroboam could not, you know, he couldn't pull it back in. It was stuck. So Jeroboam asked the man of God to pray to the Lord and ask him to restore his hand, which the man of God does. And the Lord restores his hand. And once this happened, Jeroboam, you know, he asked the man of God to come home with him to refresh himself and that he would also give him a reward. You know, but the man of God says to him, look, if you gave me half your house, I wouldn't go with you. And he says, neither will I eat bread or 
drink water in this place. So pretty much the man of God denies him. And that's where I kind of want to pick up this story from. And that's where we're going to be starting at verse nine. And verse nine goes on to say, um, for so it was charged me by the word of the Lord. This is where we get in our foundation from our topic from. He says, for so was it charged me by the word of the Lord saying, eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by that he came to Bethel, not by the way that he came to Bethel. So basically he tells him, listen, God has given me specific instructions. I'm going to follow these instructions. And that's exactly what he did. And how many know that's how we are supposed to be in our lives. Whatever it is God says, do we are supposed to do. That's what Mary told the young men at the wedding. She says, whatever he tells you to do, whatever Jesus says for you to do, just do it. Amen. So it goes on to say, now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee. This is uh, the, the man of God talking once again. I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread, not drink water with thee in this place. He says, for it was said to me, there it is again, by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. And he said unto him, and this is the prophet talking, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So the Bible lets us know it's very clear that the angel did not say this to this man. He is basically lying to the man of God, which, you know, is, is almost mind boggling because this is this is a prophet of God who is lying to the man of God about what he's saying God has told him. But what I don't want you to miss is the one thing that he used to try to convince him is, is to say, listen, I'm a prophet, too. He tried to use his position or what, it, you know, whatever his uh yeah, his position was in the church. And that's what I see a lot of. Sometimes people are influenced, you know, by these words because of the positions that these people hold. And guess what? Uh, a lot of times the positions that a lot of these people are in that sometimes we're following and we're watching, sometimes those are self-appointed positions. Sometimes those aren't even positions that God have put them in. But yet, because we hold them on such a pedestal, you know, we're pretty much willing to listen to anything that they have to say, you know, so it goes on to say, so he went back with him. This is the 19th verse. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table. Now, watch this, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah saying, thus saith the Lord. Now you're going to prophesy to him again, but this time it's from God. He says, for as much as thou has disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and has not kept the commandment, which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came his back and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it and the lion also stood by the carcass. This is such an amazing story because not only did the prophet lie to the man of God, but he lied to him. The man of God is now disobedient to the word that he knew God told him. He knew that God had gave him specific instructions, but because of this man's status, because he convinced him of who he was, you know, quote unquote, in God, he disobeys God. And now he finds himself being prophesied to by the same prophet about his death. And guess what? He died exactly how 
the prophet told him he would. And the reason why I wanted to share this story is to show you that, listen, we cannot be caught up on people's positions. We cannot be caught up on titles. Just because people have titles don't mean that they're always going to be honest with you. It don't mean that they're always going to give you what thus saith the Lord. Here we have a guy that, you know, the Bible doesn't tell us why he lied, what his intentions was. But, you know, a lot of times in modern day, you know, we see people lie, you know, and a lot of times it has to do with money, you know, because they're out here, you know, trying to get rich and trying to get paid, you know, and one of the, one of the most tragic things that I see, I think is, you know, when people start those prophetic lines, you know what I mean? Like I have nothing against prophecy. We see prophecy all through the Bible, but a lot of times what happens in these prophetic lines is you see people start to get these words and guess what? You might've seen two people in that line, but as those words are given out, the line increases and increases. I've seen lines increase to the point where we we're there for another extra two hours, hour and a half. Why? Because for people, it is so much easier to just hear this quote unquote prophecy than it is for them to just go ahead, read the word, you know, find out what God is saying about their lives. Because the Bible will clearly lay out many things about your life and the things that God, you know, has have for you and what he wants you to do. And a lot of times we get that through prayer. You know, God will let us know what it is that he wants us to do and the direction that he wants us to go. But the problem is, is sometimes, you know, we can be being careless. We can be being lazy because we don't really want to read. We don't want to study. You know, it's just easy to get this prophetic word. But guess what? A lot of times, if you're not careful, you're going to run into a guy just like this who is going to stand before you and say that the Lord told me and he's going to be flat out lying. So this Monday, again, I want to encourage you, be very careful who you are listening to. Be very careful of who you are receiving the word from. And if you feel comfortable and you feel like who you're receiving the word from is the place where you where you are supposed to be, then don't be afraid to follow behind that. It doesn't say anything about the individual. It's just you confirming what it is um, that's being said to you because in this day and time where we are now in prophecy, where we are now um, as a church, as a body of Christ, listen, deception is running rampant. And if you're not careful, you can get caught up in it. And guess what? We all know that it's the grace of God. Um, that's keeping us, you know, but there's some responsibility that, you know, God places on us. And one of those responsibilities is to listen, don't run after everything you hear. Don't get caught up in everything that's being said to you. Listen, follow behind these things in scripture or pray about it. You know what I mean? This man of God right here that was deceived, he didn't stop and say, you know, even though he already had the instruction, he didn't even, he shouldn't even have to do this, but it's not like he stopped and said, well, listen, let me consult God um, to see if he changed the plans. You know, you know, he, he didn't take time to do that. He just was like, okay, you're a prophet just like I am, you know, just because of the authority and the position you have, I'm just going to listen to you. And it's like, no, many people have done that. And, and, it, and it has cost them their death. And not only spiritually, I'm talking about literally, I've seen stories of people um, that have basically lost their life physically because people have told them to hook up with people and get with people to where the point of these individuals that they told them to hook up with murdered them. Like this, this is no exaggeration. This is no bull. This is facts. So I'm just here to encourage you guys. Listen, keep praying keep reading, keep studying, keep asking God to give you uh, uh, the discernment to discern what is him and what is not. And, you know, that's going to keep you on this journey because it's a lot of bull out here. A lot of people talking crazy. They're doing things contrary to doctrine. And, you know, unfortunately, people are being, you know, swept away by it. So I wanted to share that. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I love you. I truly, truly love you. And prayerfully, you are getting something from these messages. And prayerfully, this is encouraging you to step up and just, you know, be more responsible when it comes to your faith and then to your salvation. Guys, I love you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And when you hit that subscribe button, don't forget to click the bell. Please share this message with somebody on this Monday that you feel that it may be an encouragement to. Please share it on Facebook, wherever you are on social media. Listen, I'm just trying to encourage people to get in the word for themselves and to really enjoy God the way he intended us to enjoy him. Guys, I love you. And until our next meal together, Shalom.